The auditorium was packed as the cadets prepared for the class. The room itself was made more like a theatre, a half-circle of seats divided up in different sections, facing the large stage with a holographic screen above the stage, currently a projection of Professor Hagen, the famous close combat master and professor in galactic close combat history and technique. He stretched his shoulder wings and cracked his knuckles. For a human, he would look like a feathered angel with brown and grey feathers covering most of his body. His legs were thin but had five powerful talons. He was, after all, a professor of war, specifically close combat. Still, he was well versed in military and history as well as strategy. He was waiting patiently for the cadets to sit down. He knew most of them wanted to become his apprentice and learn the mastery of the blade, and it made him smile at the thought. These poor souls had no idea of what they were about to learn. Welcome to this class of basic combat knowledge. In this class, we will mostly speak about child's play. And yes, I'm serious. The holograph above him changed to show a large playground with several children from different species playing and having fun. They played games like hide and seek, run from the predator and follow the leader. Hagen peeked up and back at the cadets. Ah, to be young and carefree again. You can all see how they play. You might notice that different species tend to prefer different games. The Gratsu love to play, follow the leader, something we can recognize in their military structure. As he spoke, the Gratsu children were highlighted on the playground. They are the most loyal and will perform any command without hesitation. An important ability on the battlefield, if the men you command are the Gratsu, expect them to follow your order to the letter. The cadets, who had thought this was a joke, suddenly sat up as they realized what the class was about and started scanning the playground for their own species to see what they were playing with. Prof Hargon noticed that and smirked as he let them search. So, you noticed, yes, all your species are there, and this is a live feed. That's how reliable this research about child play and adult behavior is. A soft light was turned on in one of the sections, and Professor Hagen looked at the ogleish section. This species looked like a bipedal with two arms and two curled horns, and was known for its direct and aggressive play. The children usually played games of charge. There were a few on the playground. He looked at his pad and called up the cadet. Yes, Cadet Snog, what is the question? The cadet's face replaced the hologram as he stood up, an impressive specimen of his race. What about our enemies? Can this be used to predict their behavior as well? Let's say I am tasked with attacking the Chandrius. Would studying their most common children's game help me devise a battle plan? Very good, yes, absolutely. The Chandrius love to play games of confusion, but there is a logic to their games, how they move to appear larger or smaller than what they are based on their children's games. They also prefer the shadow game, so they excel in sneak attacks. Another light lit up, and he turned to the Harrot, an avian species like himself, with six limbs and a short beak like nose. Yes, Cadet Gorgon. What about the humans? The room went quiet at the word. Humans, the only single species who could fight the whole galactic confederation to a standstill. The one who was feared by all species, and all officers hoped they didn't have to fight. Prof Hagen cited, they are the last species we will talk about, but from your reaction we can just skip to it. It's after all the most important part of this lesson. What you will learn about the human's childhood play will be divided into three sections. Early childhood games, adolescent years, and finally, sports and adult games. Yes, the adult games will involve their strange mating rituals. The cadets were getting excited at this, and as he started the hologram again, the cadets got disappointed as they yet again saw their youngling playing on the playground. He chuckled. Yes, we start here. Look at the playground. On the ground, you will notice sticks. As he spoke... The sticks were lit up. There were quite a few different lengths. And as you see, most children ignore them. Ah, he smiled. Somebody is building a nest. Isn't that cute? Now let's see what happens on a human playground. 
the hologram changed into an identical playground, but empty. This playground is located in a human world. They are free humans that have allowed us to do this. It's a joint research of galactic species in early childhood. Of course, we also use this to learn more about them, as they are learning about us. It's an identical playground, and, as you can see, sticks are also on the ground. You might wonder why that's important. Well, now we will introduce 30 human children from the ages 5 to 10 years. As he spoke, they saw the children streaming into the playground, exploring the different things. Some were playing tag, others were playing hide-and-seek and so forth. But a boy spotted the sticks and picked it up, lifting it with a big grin. Another boy quickly grabbed a stick and repeated the motion, and the two boys started to fence. The cadets began to murmur. He stopped the hologram just as one boy was about to strike his friend in the head while his friend was trying to stab his foot. Yes, this is one of their games. You saw they played all our typical games, but they also played with sticks like swords. Remember that. All humans have a basic understanding of how to use a sword, dagger, axe or spear, only because they played with sticks pretending they were real weapons as a child. The hologram continued, and the strike landed. Another kid joined in, and they watched how it suddenly turned from a duel of two to a group fight of eight children, five boys and three girls. Suddenly, one of the boys drops his stick and wrestles down an opponent to the ground. At this moment, an adult human shouts and moves towards the children. The children stopped, and the fighting ended. After correcting the children, the adult checks them for damage and leaves. The kids look at each other, grin, and start again. Prof. Hagen stops the hologram. As you noticed, not only do they have a basic understanding of armed melee combat from a young age, they also have a natural basic knowledge of unarmed combat and show respect to elders, for us, which means rank. They are trained in combat as games from childhood and do not need to learn it. It's a natural part of them. This is the predator in them, but they also grouped up so they know how to work as a herd and they are able to identify something to be used as a weapon pretty simple. There was a short silence before a cadet requested to ask a question. Yes, Cadet Janus. The Oglish cadet looked shocked, but also curious. But why did the child drop the stick and use his fist instead of the weapon? If I had to guess, I would say the child felt the opponent didn't follow the rule, and he wanted to really hurt him. What you saw there was anger. Later, you will learn about what humans call berserk rage. This is perhaps the childhood version of it. The child was probably blinded by rage and feeling he needed to stop the person who, in his mind, cheated. As you will notice, humans hate cheaters. If you fight them, don't cheat. Trick them, and they will be impressed. Cheat, and you get... Well, you just saw what happened. They will go from playing fair to wanting to destroy you utterly. They will only stop if somebody else stops them, somebody they respect more than the insult of you cheating. That has to be a human, just as you know, and that human has to let them pound you a little before they can stop them. So being clever will earn their respect. Cheat. And, well, it was nice knowing you. To borrow a human phrase... The class of cadets was silent, contemplating just how crazy this was. Even the Hellworld species didn't have their children actively playing combat at such an early age. The early age was focused on defense and survival, not aggressive and just. What were these monsters that went by the name of humans? Prof. Hagen looked over the class. I think we should stop here, and tomorrow we will go over the games during the adolescent years. This is when most of us learn the art of combat. You might be surprised by what they focus on. Class dismissed. Before he left, he turned on the hologram again, showing the human children. Some idiot had given the kids two grates of Nerf guns, and the cadets watched in horror as seven- to ten-year-olds were involved in what could only be described as two armed forces in full-out war, all accompanied by children laughing while barking orders like a veteran drill instructor.
As he left the room, Prof Harkin thought he saw a few fainted cadets. He would have to address this tomorrow. Human Play The adolescent years. The cadets swarmed in trying to get a seat. There were clearly more cadets here today. Professor Hagen stretched his wings while patiently waiting for the cadets to find their places. He spotted a few new faces as well. Apparently, the rumor of what he was teaching had spread. The large, theater-like room was filled to the brim now, and he knew why there was her. I thought he would not start with them. Welcome back, and welcome to our new students. I'm pretty sure you are not a cadet, Major Gustar, but you welcome nonetheless. The Major was a thin humanoid who would be mistaken for a human if not for three major differences. His orange, almost golden skin, large pointy ears and a pointed tail. The Major was sitting with members of his species, the Huatsu. Hagen was pretty sure the beautiful younger woman next to him was his daughter. So, let's us start. He opened with a hologram of a training field filled with different species, all focused on some sport, the most common being speed running and weight training. Some young males were into combat training. As you can all see, once we reach our adolescent years, we all tend to become more physical, trying to find a mate, or at least impress one. We form packs and bound with our pack or herd. There's nothing special about this. You all just went through this and you know what to look for now. You can see again that those species that, as children, focus on speed and evasion, prefer fast movement. Those who are not so fast focus on strength and intimidation. You see a strong focus on wrestling. It's a noble sport. Don't try it with humans. At the mere mention of humans, the crowd got more focused. Yeah, I know who you want to learn about, so let's go look. The screen changed, and they saw the same as before. The humans were doing all of it. They ran, climbed, swam, and played different team sports involving balls of different sizes. The cadets just felt confused. They had expected to see a battlefield of teenage boys killing each other for the honor of a mating. Instead, they saw team building and boys forming packs for friendly competition. A light buzzed, and Prof Hagen saw it was, Yes, Cadet Jarnus. Sir, I'm confused. Why are they less violent now? I don't see any combat, just sports. Hagen chuckled. Well, that's because this is their school activity. Let's see what they do when they leave the campus. The hologram changed to a sports center, and they saw young boys and girls doing even harder physical training and what appeared to be a combat ring. Two teens were beating the crap out of each other, wearing nothing but shorts and gloves. There were kicks, strikes and grappling, though no weapons. They watched the match as it ended, expecting the loser to end his life, but instead they got up and hugged and laughed. Another team came in and took their place as the two went to an instructor to be told what they did right and wrong. The two were clearly friends. The hologram then changed to another center where archery was the only activity. As you can see, they fight for fun and still practice old-style weapons for fun. Some humans even know how to use a sling for deadly activity, but this here is not the scariest thing about them. It's what other things they do, their non-physical games. As he spoke, the hologram changed to a single human teenage boy sitting in front of a hologram. He was playing a game. I'm going to just tap into his screen so you can see what he is playing. Oh, the boy is a merly 13 years old, entering his adolescent years. The hologram showed a huge multi-level combat scenario. There was a space battle, and the dropship involved atmospheric combat with escort fighter planes against anti-air missiles and a defending air force. At the same time, he controlled one side of the ongoing ground combat. The combat was intense, and overall, all they could hear was the teenage boys cracking voices, shit-talking his opponent. The opponent had a deeper voice and was clearly getting angry at how the boy was trashing his forces. The Major stood up and just walked down towards the stage. Is this true? Is this true? He commands all those troops. 
Hagen stopped and nodded, and then the screen zoomed out. The boy was playing and drinking some liquor, clearly not taking the combat seriously. I am very serious, sir, but the command doesn't want to listen to me, and his opponent will surprise you even more. Hagen looked at the Major as the screen showed the opponent. A Dorican officer was working his four limbs across the two keyboards to counter the attacks. His hologram gaming console was state-of-the-art and twice as effective as the teenager's, but his tactics and own reaction time were slower. The Major looked at him. What game are they playing? The latest battle simulator of the Dorican Military Academy. The humans stole it and sold it as entertainment for their children. The Major took a deep breath. The cadets watched the two. How did got that from them? Hagen smirked. I was going to cover it for the last class, but the humans have their own games. Any major battle is turned into a game once the battle is declassified. There is a company that makes them as a series called Battlefield 3000. That gives you a first-person experience of entering the battlefield. And the kids excel in these games. This is one of the reasons humans use so many drone soldiers. They are not fighting you, they are playing you although they also have their own version of these strategy games. Again, a teenager could, in theory, play every major battle the humans have been involved in from the last 50 years, up to 10 years, to 5 years, in every possible position of the battle. Hell, they will make media games where you must repair fight crafts as quickly as possible so the pilot can get back into the fight. However, right now, I was going to show them what happens if you give human teenagers guns. The Major nodded and returned to his seat as the cadets prepared for the carnage to appear on the hologram, except when it appeared they were all disappointed. The human teenagers treated the weapons with respect. They seemed focused and concentrated. Looks boring, right? They feel the same way, so they invented guys that don't kill. They simply tag you. And here is what happens if you give them those weapons. As a reward, they saw the wild chaos of a tag battle with grenades, guns, and even knives. The humans seemed to approach it as a game. There was laughter and jokes, but the moment one player got hurt, the game stopped. The wounded teenager, who had fallen down from a roof and broken a foot, was escorted to a medic. Once he was secured, they were back at it again. What you witnessed is perhaps the most important lesson. A human can quickly go from laughter to deadly seriousness and back to laughter in seconds. For me, this is the essence of humanity. They adjust just too quickly for us, and they can control their emotion to the point that loss of emotional control is considered a loss of honor. There are few accepted times for losing your emotional control. In combat, that is called going berserk, and it's a horrible sight to behold. Imagine all you have seen be focused into a cold rage that appears to be mindless, but the only mindless part that is gone is the emotional control and they can all do it, every single one, even the fat old grandma. He watched them as he started a hologram showing a middle-aged woman beating up two Bandorian pirates who had shot her dog. It was not a nice sight. The Bandorian were green lizard-like creatures with blue and silver skin, four arms, and a powerful tail. The grandma had grabbed a stick and wielded it like a maniac, killing one of them and chasing the other away. Don't mess with their furry friends. That rage is, for some strange reason, called John Wick. Yes, they have named their berserk rages, and it's quite acceptable. There is also the Mama Bear, extremely deadly, which occurs if you attack one of their children. Anyway, back to the adolescent. The boys tend to fare more violent at this time of their life, and if they can, they will form gangs and get into trouble. He stopped and took a deep breath, knowing the next part would be difficult for the cadets to understand. So much trouble that they had to make their own prison system for them called Juvenile Detention Center. As he spoke, such Juvenile Detention Center was shown, filled with teenage boys lounging about under armed guard. 
Yes, they have teenagers that are so criminal that they need to be put under arms, and by armed it's deadly force armed guard. It took about five minutes for the cadets to calm down. Proffer Hagen just waited, and he continued when it was quiet enough. Humans take their offspring very seriously. They do this to remove those with little self-control from the population so the rest can feel safe. They don't tolerate their children behaving like beasts, so don't try to act like one around them. They will put you down for the good of whatever group they belong to. In the next class, we will get into the more, well, let's say that I was once told a human male has two demons sitting on his shoulder. One asks him to fight everything, and the other asks him to mate with everything, sometimes the same thing. So tomorrow we will discuss the mating part, and how that affects their ability to wage war. You sure got their attention now? Admiral Junker of the Galactic Union Military Academy, Guma, stood next to Prof. Hargon on the stage. As the room filled, the cadets were surrounded by military officers of different ranks. Some wondered if they had entered the wrong hall. Well, we have to get them on our side. The warmongers are going to get us killed if that insane plan of pacifying Earth gets approved. I'm just not sure I understand why you wanted to focus on human mating games when we finally got them in the room. Junker smirked. Humans would describe him as a sexy green orc. Brute force might win a battle, but spices and misdirection win the war. You said it yourself. They would run circles around our spies. Anyway, I will leave you to it. The Admiral made his way off the stage over to a small box of high-ranking officers. He noticed Major Huatsu was among them, his daughter sitting with her fellow cadets. Maybe he could use her. He noticed the room was filled, and it was time to start. Welcome back to my cadets and welcome to our new guests. Today we will focus on the mating games of the humans. It's not what the high brass wants to hear about. However, it's important. It deals with many aspects of our lives, and because of that it affects our ability to wage war. The most obvious is the replacement rate. If we don't mate, we don't reproduce. No reproduction means no new soldiers on the battlefield. We don't want to return to the clone disaster that wiped out the Ganask and Sushans. So yes, mating is important. Some were chuckling from the less intelligent cadets, and he could see several female cadets blushing. Good. Just what he wanted. So let's get to it, and for the Admiralty. Please forgive this next part, and don't punish the cadets you might observe. They were aiding in research and were under order to get inebriated. It was a slight lie, but he had been a cadet and knew all about this. Hell, it was like this when he met his wife. The hollow screen sprang to life, showing a restaurant where cadets drank and joking around. The jokes were crude and quite funny for soldiers, and there was dancing. Some cadets were having a wrestling competition while others were singing. All the female cadets were watching and enjoying the show. Now and then, one of the females would pick up a male, and they would leave. There was a clear divide between the males and females in this setting. Quite a common scene, right? Notice it anything specific? One cadet brave to answer. Each species has its own mating rituals, and rarely does anybody try another species' mating ritual. If they do, it's just for fun and not for potential mating. He looked at the Oglish cadet. That is correct, Cadet Niran. Noticed anything else? The cadet looked at the hologram and then replied, We keep to our species. Prof Hagen was impressed. Yes, we don't mingle so much. There is one more thing I want to point out. Can you spot it? Niran looked at the hologram, then around the hall, and back to the hologram as everybody was watching him. Well, here we are sitting mixed, I mean male and female, but in the hologram there is a clear division between where a male and female sit. Hargon grinned. I will recommend you for the intel division after this. You are absolutely correct. Please sit. 
He looked at the audience. So let's look at the humans. In the same scene, they have something called nightclubs and bars. Imagen is a restaurant that mainly sells drinks to make you intoxicated. Humans' favorite is alcohol, though other means do exist. Anyway, let's watch what happens in such a bar. Oh, these humans are late youth, called late teens and young adults. We will start there and go backwards to their earliest encounter of mating. The cadet was confused by this. As he started the hologram, a standard nightclub came up filled with young adults dancing, flirting, dancing, and some were already kissing. The music was loud and catchy. Several of the cadets could not help but move slightly to the tunes. He let them study the scene for a while before stopping it. So what's the biggest difference? Several students were ready to reply, so he randomly picked one. Cadet Shadgu, the humanoid green-skinned woman with red and bluish hair and no nose, stood up. For humans, she would look like an exotic mermaid with legs, which would be correct, as her species were indeed aquatic. Thank you for picking me. The first thing I noticed was that they are mixed. The second thing I noticed was that both sexes are involved in the mating rituals. And the third thing I noticed was that there doesn't seem to be a particular mating ritual. There was dancing that was not done for mating attempts and discussions that seemed to intend to secure a mating. That is quite good. I have to recommend you as well, then. Yes, you are correct. The humans mix, and you might find a female initiating the mating rituals, which there are. He stopped for dramatic effect. Thousand different. As he spoke, the nightclub changed to a sports arena where some young men were showing off their ability to kick a ball to impress some females, to a marital art area where two men were beating each other senselessly to impress a woman. The match was arranged where the opponent allowed himself to be beaten at a high price. Then, the scenes changed to a dance club where the men tried to use their rhythm to impress. It changed through different sports, physical activities, and other performative activities like dancing, playing instruments, and singing. He noticed a few female cadets were interested in the holograms, where young men were showing off their bodies. But the most important ability for a human when it comes to mating is not physical or performative, but charisma. The hologram changed to a small cantina with soft music playing in the background and a group of teenage boys and girls sitting and eating pizza. Pay attention to this group. Boy 1 is interested in girl 1, girl 1 is friends with girls 2, 3 and 4. Girl 2 is already in a relationship, pre-mating with boy 2. Boy 3 is just there apparently just for the food. Now let's watch. We have of course translated this. After this, we will discuss why this has any influence on war. For the next 30 minutes, they watched how the boy tried to flirt with the girl using humor, deception, and some light-hearted blackmail to get the girl to agree. The surprising thing was how boy three was constantly keeping girls three and four out of the conversation, while boy two kept his girlfriend occupied, only to comment when he could help boy one situation with girl one. When the pizza was finished, the girl promised with a smile to go on a date with boy one without her friends. Boy two and girl two were quite happy, and girls three and four were quite angry at boy three, who thought they could not stop talking to him. What you saw here was teenagers, humans aged 15 to 16, engaged in flirting, a precondition to mating for humans. The main object is for the engager to try to, with words, make the future partner choose them as potential mates through humor and manipulation. The two boys, boys two and three, are what they would call wingmen. Their only job is to help boy one in his flirt with girl one. That can mean separating her from her friends or backing him up to make him shine. They practice this from the moment they start to realize the differences between the sexes. Now how? Why is this important for warfare? He looked at his pad and was surprised that Major Gorge of the military intelligence had volunteered to answer. 
Major Gorge, you would like to comment? Yes, but I have a question first. The Major was of the same species and thought his feathers were darker than his. These humans, where are they on the cross-mating scale? Ah, I see where you're going with this. They are class 6, with pheromones at rate 9, so they can mate successfully with classes 6. As you know, that covers most of the upper military and diplomatic species used by the Galactic Union. It is, after all, the most common among bipedal species. And their mental manipulation level is at the same level. So, with that extra information, you are basically telling us that a mere child of theirs would be able to trick most of our cadets to share intel without even realizing what's going on, and young adults would be able to sexually seduce our officers if encountered in a non-combat situation. It's worse than that, sir. They have successfully seduced prisoners of war to their side during interrogation. Let me demonstrate. He started a programmed and simple hologram of a bare-chested human walking toward the crowd, then sat down as a chair manifested. He was a perfect sediment, with little to no fat, almost glowing eyes, and a devil-may-care smile. When he spoke, he spoke in perfect Huatsu. His eyes were focused on Major Gustar's beautiful daughter. Hello, gorgeous. What deity did your parents steal you from? The girl's jaw dropped, and then she bit her lips, trying her best not to blush. Unable to speak, some of the other females had looks of jealousy, as it was clear that this divine creature seemed to only have eyes for one woman in the whole crowd. Some of the men were laughing and making some snide comments. Prof. Hargon ignored them for now. Sorry about that, dear. Then he turned his attention back to Major Goge. Their lack of feather and fur simply shows off their muscles better, and it's in our DNA to prefer muscular mates, but they also have to compete with others with the same body, so they have to show off their quick thinking as well. The ability to use their mere words to change a situation from hostile to peaceful, or to gain information without the use of violence. And if you think avoiding using females would help, he smirked as the man vanished, and a beautiful human woman almost tripped into the holographic scenes. She was dressed in something that might appear modest, though it showed off all her forms. She giggled as she apologized for being so clumsy. Then she turned to pick up something from the floor, innocently showing off her ascent. Then she stood up, took a short breath that showed off her other assets, and turned to look at the crow. Wow, such a bunch of strong men. You can make a girl dream. She bit her lips as she leaned towards a group of male cadets of different. Would it be too much to ask for your name? Then she whispered, I'm normally not so straightforward, but wow. It's you. All the men were ready to give up names and more before the hologram vanished, and the room was deadly quiet. He let the crowd think before he continued. These were holograms. You were not affected by their pheromones. Think about that. These humans are trained from childhood through play how to fight with melee weapons and easily take up firearms as if they were a part of them. Their whole mating ritual depends on adapting to whatever the mate would prefer, so you cannot rely on one thing, but several different abilities. Of course, most specialize, but the majority are pretty adept. And I have not touched on their military training. This is human training. How they train humans to just be humans. Take all you have learned here now and add military training on top. The room was still completely silent as he spoke. If we are going to fight them, then remember this. Oh, this is just what they were willing to share, as it's freely available on their own net, and not hidden behind safety. Behavior was also observed by our own research teams. We were not allowed into their military bases, but do we really need to? Their childhood is our boot camp. He turned off the projector and looked at the crowd. Class dismissed. Professor Hagen was sitting in his office when the door opened and Admiral Juncker entered and sat across from him. 
Hagen turned off the screen, and the desk table turned black as he bowed his head to his superior. Sir, what can I do for you? My friend, how to say this? You ruffled some feathers. The intelligence would like to go over your research, and they are taking over your research project. Hagen smirked. And I'm expected to cooperate to the fullest? Of course they will do that. Let me guess. Am I also forbidden to repeat these lectures? Are they scared that the officers will be too terrified of the humans? Something like that. Look, you have to understand, no other culture is this warlike from childbirth. I have seen the videos you didn't show them, how their fathers play. What's the word you used? Rough, with their boys. How can that not be faked? I saw a video where a father was tossing a what toddler into the deep end of the pool, and the kid swam back just to be tossed again, while the toddler laughed and said, again. Not to mention the videos of the physical combats the kids had with the adult, while the adult was laughing and approving of three toddlers trying to beat him up. The only species we know that come close are cannibalistic predator species, and they never reach combusting age. But nothing I showed is incorrect, and I left them out because they are too difficult for us to understand. Besides, they are not cannibalistic. They actually frown on it. He stretched his wings in frustration. And if the military intelligence takes over, then the humans would know it's now military research, and they will use it against us. But this is a military academy, of course it's military. Not for humans. Some of our cadets will become diplomats, doctors, lawyers, engineers, astrophysicists and pilots. For humans, this military academy has a different name. They call it a university with a military section. My next semester is with the diplomatic and pilot cadets. Their military academies only train military officers, and they have separate academies for each military branch, and to bring it back the research. As kids, Humans have several games where the main goal is to trick others into believing something wrong. The one that springs to mind is the game called Werewolf, or The Murder is Among Us. Is that the one where they have a secret lottery, and the winner is the killer, and the other has to guess who the killer is? Yeah, and the killer wins if there are only two left. Again, from childhood, different versions of this. When they suspect something is wrong, we will get deliberately wrong intel. I want us to understand them and make them our allies. Can you imagine an ally like them? We would never have to fear the hordes of monsters out there. They will actively hunt them down. We just would have to point it out, and they will deal with it. Humans are terrible creatures, probably among the worst out there. But they have one good feature. As he spoke, a screen on the wall came to life. This is not in the files. I just received it last night from a human envoy. It's from Professor Quan Texas at the Institute of Technology and Science that I work with. Uh, there was a human envoy here. Several screens showed humans' interactions with animals, mainly cats, dogs, and other exotic animals. A lot of families are also training animals from birth to their death and teaching their children this as well. So add animal control to the list, but that's not the important part. Before the Admiral could answer, the screen showed humans rescuing wild animals, wasting resources and endangering their own lives to rescue clearly dangerous animals. If they find you worth rescuing, then they will protect you. Last point I want to make. The screen changed to two aliens being interviewed. They looked oglish, speaking how they had been attacked by a cursed frigate at their mining station. The location was in the cure section near the human section. The aliens described how the attack would have killed them off, if not for the alien ship that arrived and blew them up. Then these aliens descended to the mining station and repair the damages, making some strange comments about neighbors taking care of each other before leaving. Then the report changed to a picture of several bipedal aliens in an exosuit that covered their whole body. It would resemble a tight-fitted knight's armor with a slitted helmet for humans. That is the human military. One ship took out a cursed frigate. We generally need three or a carrier. Why are you showing me all this? Admiral Junker shifted in his seat, and Hagen chuckled. Because you are not Admiral Junker. What? 
Why would you say something so? Admiral Junk tried to smile but was clearly nervous. Admiral Junk always goes directly to my drink cabinet and makes himself a drink. He loves the tekasfu I have. It's quite expensive, and I get a steady supply from my father-in-law, and he would not be so nice about it. Now, what do you think a human can do if I can detect you? The Admiral's appearance changed into Major Goge, and the door opened as the real Admiral entered. He laughed, walked to the wall, and tapped it to reveal a hidden cabinet, where he took out three glasses and a bottle before joining the Major and Hagen at the table. I told you it was a shit idea. He poured them all a glass, then down the drink before pouring himself another drink. Speak freely here, Major. No need to worry. The Major sipped his drink and looked at the screen. How certain are you that these are real? Very. Some of the images are from alien encounters. They don't think this is any secret. Hell, we got their whole world history as a gift, including their dissenting views. Some of the major nations value something called freedom of speech. Basically, you can say and write what you want, but not necessarily act on it. It means we have free access to everything they don't deem secrets. Don't ask. Apparently, this freedom of speech doesn't involve military secrets. Anyway, as long as we don't make it into a spy game and just try to learn about their cultures and social structure, then we are pretty sure the intel is correct. They are, of course, expecting the same about. The Major looked at the images. They tamed a predator and kept it as a pet. By the gods, I honestly don't know what to do. OK, continue and work with the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. I think she would love to meet these humans. Hagen smirked. I'm not letting my daughter near those humans. I do not want a human son-in-law, the Major smirked. Some things you have to make sacrifices for the betterment of the Galactic Union. Hagen cursed. Six months later. Dad, we just signed the treaty. The humans are joining the Galactic Union. We are returning home in two months. Hagen smiled at the hologram at his daughter. It had been four months since they last spoke. He knew her well enough to know there was something else she wanted to tell him, something she deemed more important than that the most deadly species in the galactic history had decided to be friends and allies. That's fantastic. So what are you hiding from me? I recognize that posture. Spit it out. She chuckled, then looked like a shy youth and looked up at him. I know I promised you I wouldn't date a human, but Mike is not like the others he... Professor Hagen cursed. 